varicose veins, also known as spider veins, plagues millions of women across the world. Not just women, but men as well. As they tend to age, they also develop varicose veins or spider veins. Now, what we need to understand is how this works. Most people think that surgery is the only option. And in some cases, it may be because sometimes when your varicose veins are too complicated, and this is usually determined by doing a Doppler test to make sure that the blood is flowing the right way. But we need to understand what happens. So... The blood from your heart is carried by arteries and capillaries to trillions of cells and all your organs in the human body. So the arteries and capillaries carry blood from your heart to all of your organs and your cells. Now the veins carry the blood back from all your organs and all of your cells back to your heart. Now these veins are like tiny pipe structures and they have like imagine it as a one-way valve which means the blood can only flow from your organs and your cells back to your heart. Now what happens in the condition of varicose veins or spider veins, this one-way valve stops operating the right way. So some of the blood, instead of flowing back to the heart, tends to move backwards and form pools. So the swollen veins that you see is nothing but deoxygenated blood that is collecting in little pools, usually in the leg area. And what happens is, since it's deoxygenated blood, the color of these spider veins or these varicose veins usually is a dark purple, sometimes blue or a very, very dark black. So that is all deoxygenated blood that's not supposed to pool in that area. Now, to be fair, many people live a normal life with varicose veins. It doesn't harm them. It doesn't hurt them. Everything functions, functions just the right way. But what we need to understand that whenever something happens in the human body, these are called symptoms. And symptoms are usually the human body doing the right thing at the right time. So, for example, we have a runny nose or we have a fever or we have diarrhea or we have vomiting or we have a swelling. These are all symptoms of the body doing the right thing at the right time. Your body is creating something to heal you or to protect you. So we have a swollen lymph gland or we have a swelling to protect us or the body produces inflammation to protect us when we have a wound. But we have to return to normalcy at some point. If we don't return to normalcy, that's when it becomes an issue like extended inflammation. So in varicose veins as well, there is a lot of inflammation in these veins. So moving someone into an anti-inflammatory diet is the first solution towards this. But let's look at what else causes these varicose veins. Hormonal changes in the human body. So women who tend to go through menopause. <clears throat> when there is a hormonal uh, fluctuation, you can have varicose veins as well. People who stand a lot, whose jobs require them to stand for long periods of time also cause varicose veins. Sitting as well, having a very sedentary lifestyle will also increase varicose veins because when you sit, you literally cut off the amount of circulation to the lower part of the body. And people will understand this when they sit for long periods of time and they get up, their lower legs will be stiff, they'll feel a heaviness in their calves, they'll feel cramps in their muscles. That's because you've cut off circulation. The human body was never designed to sit for a long period of time. We got to keep active, we got to keep moving. Our bodies are designed for movement because when we have movement, we have circulation. When we have circulation, we allow the arteries and capillaries to carry the blood the right way to our organs and our veins to carry the bad blood back to our heart. That circulation works perfectly when we have the right amount of movement, which is exercise. Weight, when we tend to put on too much of weight as we age, all that pressure goes onto your feet, onto your legs, onto your calves, and your varicose veins can get much worse. Much worse. So it's very, very important that we understand that losing a little bit of weight at a time, a little bit of weight at a time, even one kilo a month or two kilos a month, will take that pressure off your veins and off your legs, giving you a lot of relief. Now you can have varicose veins, but when varicose veins come along with water, retention or water swelling in your legs that's when you know that you really have to make some lifestyle changes to improve this so let's get straight into the lifestyle changes i'm going to discuss with you a couple of lifestyle changes that we use with hundreds and hundreds of patients around the world and i'm going to share them with you okay these are the most effective ones that we've seen work when people make lifestyle changes so number one is apple cider vinegar our favorite you get a good brand of apple cider vinegar which has the mother culture in now you soak a piece of clot in apple cider vinegar. So you pour some apple cider vinegar in a bowl, no need to dilute it with water because you're not ingesting it, and you soak a piece of clot, and then you use this clot to massage the area where you have the varicose veins. What you can do as well is sometimes if your varicose veins are really bad, you soak the clot and you know make like a, a kind of a wrapping around your leg where you have the veins and tie it up for a while and let it be there for about 20 to 30 minutes. So you have soaked apple cider vinegar clot around your varicose veins. 
Ginger is highly anti-inflammatory and my favorite when it comes to varicose veins. So you just cut a few, a few pieces of ginger, maybe like a one inch, one inch piece of ginger, peel it, you cut it really fine and you boil it into a tea. You can add a little bit of black pepper to this concoction. This is highly anti-inflammatory and improves circulation in your arteries and in your veins as well. Elevation, when you're sitting to watch television or when you're sleeping, when you're sleeping at night, try to keep two pillows underneath your legs so there's a little bit of elevation for your blood flow this is extremely important so even when you're sitting keep your legs elevated up now this is when we're sitting in unnatural i call them unnatural positions like chairs and sofas these are unnatural but when you sit on the ground or you sit with your legs crossed or you sit in a vajrasana position automatically circulation will improve in your body but if you're not sitting in that position sitting with elevation or sleeping with elevation will help you with your varicose veins as well exercise circulation so if you think that having a sedentary lifestyle is going to help you're highly mistaken we need movement the older you are you need more movement the younger you are you need more movement when you move all these veins squeeze together so when your muscles contract they squeeze your veins your veins will push out blood we all understand that our varicose veins is the pooling of blood. blood. Blood is collecting and stagnating and it's deoxygenated because only flowing blood has oxygen. When it pools, it creates deoxygenated blood, which explains the dark color, the purple, the dark blue or the black. So the more you move, you don't have to do any strenuous exercise, something as simple as walking. And if you don't have too much of pain, I would advise you to do calf raises. So it's simple, you stand, you put your hands on a chair and then you stand on your toes, you go back down on your full feet. You stand on your toes, these are called calf raises. It's extremely beneficial for you to improve the circulation. So start off with a set of five and then move on to 10. Maybe do two to three sets of five, five, five and then 10, 10, 10. But this will be fantastic for your varicose veins. Start, but exercise is extremely important. Yoga as well, because yoga, when you do the right kind of yoga, not the wrong crappy yoga that most people are doing today, when you do the right movement which coordinates with your breath, with your inhale and exhale. So every move that you make when you do in yoga has to coordinate with an inhale or an exhale, which is why power yoga is crap. It's complete crap. It's not even yoga. Because if you cannot coordinate your breath with your movement, it is not yoga. It's just movement and movement is good for you. So. Yoga and pranayama is extremely important because again, pranayama trains your lungs to utilize oxygen. We need the right amount of oxygen to flow in your arteries, in your cells, in your veins and every single part of your body for good life and for good immunity as well. My favorite or one of the most effective is a mixture of coconut oil and sesame oil. Get a good cold pressed coconut oil and sesame oil, mix it together and before you sleep at night, you can do this twice a day, slightly warm it, warm it for about 30 seconds and then apply, massage your legs in an upward motion. The stroke has to be in the direction of your heart with this coconut and sesame oil. It'll give you a lot of relief and it'll help you with your veins as well. Finally, it has to come down to diet because food is medicine. We can either use food as medicine or food as poison. You need to be on an anti-inflammatory diet. What, what this means is you eat foods which are anti-inflammatory like ginger, garlic, a high fiber diet. You get fiber from fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. Sweet potato is fantastic because it has a high source of vitamin E. I would tell you to pop a vitamin E supplement, but most vitamin E, unless it's emulsified, is synthetic vitamin E and it doesn't really have too much of impact on the human body. But you can get vitamin E in pumpkin seeds, almonds, cashew nuts, walnuts, of course, unsalted sweet potato and green leafy vegetables. You want to have... <clears throat> If your varicose veins come along with water retention, you want to be on natural diuretic. So you take coriander and parsley, make a juice out of it, and you drink that because that flushes water out of your system. Or you buy barley, barley pearls from the chemist, and you boil this into a kind of a tea, and you drink that water, and that will act as a natural diuretic to flush out water from your system. Or you can take a tablespoon of coriander seeds, and you can soak it for about two hours, and then boil it into a tea. That works as a natural diuretic, forcing water out of your system. Again. If you have a kidney problem or you have a CKD, which is a chronic kidney disease, you want to make sure that you don't get onto diuretics without your doctor's permission, even if they're natural diuretics. And finally, magnesium. Most people today have a deficiency in magnesium, and which is why they have problems in their coughs, their quads, and in their veins at the same time. So if you have varicose veins, if you don't have a bathtub at home, you can use a bucket, fill the bucket up with warm water, put about one or two cups of Epsom salt, which is cheap, and you can buy it from a normal chemist. 
Put about two cups of Epsom salt in a bucket of warm water and soak your feet in that Epsom, wa Epsom salt water. Do this for a couple of days. It will give you a large amount of relief. And remember, magnesium can be absorbed by your skin when, you're soaked in, when you soaked your feet into Epsom salt. Rem reminder, when you're soaking yourself in Epsom salt, remember to sip on water because you also flush out a lot of water from your system. Magnesium is also found in bananas and avocados and green leafy vegetables and nuts and seeds. So simple, when you eat a normal balanced diet, which is 60 to 70% raw, which comes from your fruits, your vegetables, your nuts, your seeds, you know, I mean, you have everything that you need, almost every vitamin and mineral that the body lacks. So that's it when it comes to varicose veins. You can try essential oils as well. You know, uh, there's an oil called cypress oil, that's C-Y-P-R-E-S-S. -S. So you take about four to five drops of cypress oil, you mix it with a little bit of coconut oil or sesame oil, and you can rub it in the areas where you have your varicose veins, or you can also use pure peppermint oil, which you dilute with a little bit of coconut oil, about four to five drops, and you apply it on your varicose veins area. If you have varicose veins, do not wear high heels, because high heels will aggravate and stop the circulation, making your varicose veins worse. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. Share this video with people who are elder as well, because a lot of old people suffer with these veins, and they live with this fear that something's going to happen with them. Someone's put this fear in their mind that, oh, I'm going to have a stroke or a blockage. Please don't worry about that, because even in the, in the worst cases of varicose veins, your body will find a way to supply blood to your heart and continue. Your body will work around your condition. But like I said, if you have a heart disease or you have complications, you want to do a Doppler test to make sure you have the right circulation happening in your body. Have a great day, everyone.